Well done. 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 Well they shall be filled. filled. We pray tonight you came with your cup turned up, ready to get it filled up. Amen. Amen. We always want more knowledge from the Lord and uh, a closer walk with Him. Amen. Amen. It's, uh, we'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. If you got prayer requests. Can you remember my son on Joey? When they took the veins out of his leg, he's having a lot of trouble with his leg. Well, this part I don't think bothers as much as the leg. Had a co-worker this week who's lost her father. I also have another co-worker who is um, facing a brain cancer. <clears throat> that she did not know anything about until she went to go get something to eat and then she was trying to get home and she was at the light before blowing the horn and she didn't even know what she was doing. She back at work. No. Pray for me. And Billy. Yeah. <clears throat> she went to the uh, doctor this week, and the cancer doctor wanted to switch his medicine to a different. Different kind to see if it would help his appetite and his strength. So we need to pray that that would switch the medicine. But I don't, I don't have that. I only saw her twice. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Keep praying for me and Sue, if you would, and my whole family. <laughs> They all need prayer. <clears throat> let's keep Daniel and his family in prayer today. Uh, let's keep our church service coming up on Sunday. Keep that in prayer. And then pray for uh, the Lord to move in a mighty way. And uh, we want to pray for our church. We we'll keep, uh, uh, make sure we have vision. And then, and, uh, then we can all have <coughs> be focused together. And I guess it's a good way to say that. Uh, the scripture teaches that without a vision, the people perish. So we need to make sure that we we can see uh, what God's got in store. We might not have a full thing of what God's got in store, but he'll put on our heart a direction to go and a way to, to get there. And... and he gives us the strength and the ability to make it happen. Amen? So, let's keep that in prayer. I know the, let's continue. <coughs> let's lift up Miss Doris tonight. I know she's a stomach not feeling good tonight. So keep her in prayer. Remember, Mom. She still has that cough. I want to pray for, uh, I know we, we say in general our church, but I want to pray for our elderly tonight here in our church. Uh, that we know that the, bo the bodies get feeble. You know, the bodies, you know, they, they get weak. It's just, that's just the normal process of life uh, for some. Yeah. Amen. So we want to uh, pray for the Lord to renew your strength. Amen. And to, to give you the, the vitality that he wants you to have and that you're capable of having. Amen. It's, uh, there are some people that they, some, some days I'm 59, some days I feel a little older than that. <laughs> you know, some days when the, the back or what aches and pains or whatever, the time it all wears off. You know, sometimes the body feels a little older than that. Some days I feel younger than that. So I look in the mirror, and you know, I say, where's all that white hair come from? <laughs> but we want to pray for our seniors. We want to pray for our young people here at the church. Uh, we, we know that uh, 
they teach certain things in public schools that they, they sent out a, a thing this week for, they're looking for a superintendent there in Alamance, Burlington City School System and that's what we was looking for in a superintendent. Check, 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 all these. Are, then, it get, then it gives you a chance to fill in, you know, write something. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so, you know, it's uh, looking to see if we can get prayer back in schools. Did we, you know, uh, limit the age they start teaching such education, you know, and, uh, or restrict that, you know, because they start going so early now and they, and then I, I put out some other things just because we we see that there's things that are taught that the only time we can correct those things are at church or at, or in our home. Amen. And, and realize that just because a teacher teaches it or a professor teaches it at college does not mean it's true or does not mean it's appropriate. And then so, so we want to pray for that and pray for the, the, uh, the Lord would protect our young people's hearing that they would, they'll hear and they'll answer the right things on the test if they're tested on it. Then, uh, but then they'll be, they'll follow the leadership of the Lord. Amen. And then we'll be the examples, us older people, we'll be the example for, for our young people. Amen. Not just do what I say not what I do, but yeah. do what I say because I do what I do. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and you live in my house. <laughs> 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 Until you pay the bills. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Just an uplifted hand. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for the blessings you bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to be in your house tonight. We know, Lord, that uh, we have to push sometimes to be in your house. And I thank you for those that are here tonight that push, their, uh, push through and gain victory to be here tonight. Lord God, we pray, Father, as David says, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me, know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in thy way everlasting. Tonight, Lord, we ask for you to create within us a clean heart. Father God, may you purge our, our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our actions, all that as we come in and hear your word, Father God, we'll be able to hear your word, that you give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to understand. We lift up the sick of our church here tonight, Lord. We lift up uh, Barbara and Jimmy. We lift up Miss Doris, Lord, tonight, who couldn't be here. I pray for you to calm her stomach. Father God, I pray, Lord, for Jimmy, you continue to touch his, uh, the fluid, uh, that it will continue to drop to normal level, that, Lord, that he'll be able to touch his lungs to, to be able to breathe the way he's supposed to, and you allow the oxygen to carry, or his, uh, as he breathes it, the oxygen will get in the blood the way it's supposed to, to carry the, the life to the organs that it's supposed to do. Lord God, along with, uh, with Eugene, Lord, that his oxygen also, that you would, uh, be uh, bring strength that would bring uh, help Father God to his different organs I pray Father for his lungs Lord God as uh, doctors say Lord certain things and they say that uh, things that we listen to it long enough we believe it but Lord tonight we believe your report that we know that nothing is impossible with you and Lord we lift him up before you Lord God and ask you Lord you touch his, uh, touch his body and as they change his prescription we pray, Lord God, that you'll touch his appetite to be able to uh, get the nutrients. He'll he'll desire food. He'll he'll like the taste of it, and, and Father God, that he'll find himself finding joy in his eating. And I pray, Father, that you give him the health and strength, Lord God, that he can praise you like he wants to. Father God, and I pray for Millie, Lord, tonight that you'd uh, continue to touch her body and the different things that ails her, but it also as she tries to uh, worry and. And she concerned about Eugene. Father God, help her find that, to, that you've got everything under control, that she can be relaxed as well. Yes, we pray, Father. But Lord, we, we don't have to worry and we don't have to stress. We just put it in your care. Now lift up Willie and Sylvia before you, Lord. We know, Father, that, that as they push through their backs and, and different ailments that come in their pathway, <clears throat> we pray, Father, for you to strengthen them. <clears throat> Lord God, tonight, Lord God, that you would just touch their concerns, 
Father God, of uh, in their growth in you, Lord, that, that Father God, you'd draw them closer to you. We lift up, Father God, Sharon's co-worker, uh, Lord Jesus, that uh, was diagnosed with this uh, brain tumor. Lord, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would touch, touch this lady, Father God, touch her head. Father God, we pray that this uh, brain tumor would begin to decrease in size, that the pressure would decrease. Father God, that we pray, Father, that you would give the doctors wisdom. And most of all, Lord God, that you would touch this, uh, touch this woman, Lord God, to know you and to know, Lord, that you, you can and you will do a work in her life as she calls upon you. I pray, Father God, for her to be, uh, you to bless her spiritually, physically, and financially, Lord. Father God, we lift up Joey, Lord, as uh, having side effects from getting uh, uh, an artery moved from here to there, in, in his, from his body up to his heart, Lord. I pray, Father, that you'd help him to recover speedily. Father God, that you'll help the, the itching, you'll help, Father God, the tightness. We pray, Father God, that you'll touch him. And Father God, that he'll be able to give you the praise, honor, and glory just because he's able to, you give doctors wisdom to be able to take or one artery and uh, uh, to move it to another place. And we ask you, God, to just touch his touch His body in a way, Lord God, that he can give you the praise, honor, and glory. Father God, we lift up Patsy. Lord Jesus, you'll touch her and this uh, little nagging cough that she's having. We know, Lord, it's been going on for a long time, and we, we, we still call upon you. We know, Lord, that you'll bring the comfort, and Lord God, to be able to ease this off. Lord, I lift up Daniel and his family. We pray, Father, that you'd bless them here tonight. You'll continue to touch him as he's uh, going through his uh, physical therapy, as he's playing his music. <coughs> and, Father God, that he'll be able to continue to, to write songs and play for you, Lord. That, Father God, you'll give him a, a smoother and a more accurate mobility in his hand. I pray, Father, for his wife. Lord God, as she goes to, goes to work and work in these night shift hours, that you'll give her strength. Father God, that each one that's on the, under our care tonight, we pray, Father, for you to uh, touch them, Father God, protect them. Lord, we pray for our young people here tonight, Lord God, that's uh, part of uh, Pledge Grove Wesleyan Church, that you would protect their hearing, that as they hear the different things at school and in society, Father God, that they will they can uh, perceive that what's going on, but at the same time, Lord, have a, a godly understanding then, Lord God, be able to follow and seek after you and give them the strength uh, to, to resist the, the devil as the devil tries to tempt them and try them to go in the wrong direction. But you'll give them the strength to walk and follow in the right direction. We pray for all of our elderly here at Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church, Lord, that you'll renew their strength. Father God, that you'll give each one vitality. We pray, Father God, that you'll bring in, and just bring an extra pep in their step. Father God, to call upon you. We know, Lord, that if we're not careful, we'll allow ourselves to, as we get older, to, to actually feel older than, than we need to feel. But, Father God, I pray, Father, that, that you'll renew our strength. You'll renew our, our desires and you'll renew our ability to praise and worship you, to walk and just do normal functions that, that the body is designed to do. And, Father God, that we'll not just sit down on the stool and do nothing, but, Father God, we'll stay mobile and we'll stay flexible in a way, Lord, that we can raise our hands and praise you. We can put our hands together to praise you. We can stand up and we can sway back and forth. We can dance for you, Lord God. We can stomp our feet. We can play the instruments. We can play the drums. We can play the piano, play guitars. Whatever we play, Lord God, we'll play in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord, tonight that you would uh, just bless this scripture that we'll share. Father God, that you would give each one of us, Lord, the, the ability to grow closer to you. Strengthen our hearts to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I know we uh, seem to go a little low, but sometimes you need to be specific in your prayer. Amen. Amen. I just, uh, we don't, I don't do that a whole lot uh, at the church, but I wanted us that while we was here tonight, to be able to take a little extra time as uh, some of you were specific with your prayer request and so uh i don't i don't want to just take that lightly you know we want to make sure that if you're if you're concerned enough to be specific we want to be concerned enough to be specific in our prayer as we pray amen, amen. if you would go ahead and open your bibles to acts chapter 2 
Tonight we're going to start talking a little bit about baptism. And we've just finished up for the last three, three weeks uh, dealing with one God. And we were sort of getting, uh, planting the seed into your spirit, how the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all one God. Amen. God is a, uh, carries on different characteristics. Amen. We know that there's times that God is love, and there's times that God uh, shows wrath. Amen. There's times uh, that, that God is cuddles up, and there's times that God will chastise you. Amen. So we have to realize tonight that even though you experience these different things with God, God is always God, and there's only one. Amen. We've got to be careful, even as we read uh, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, I can read and I, and I don't get confused. Amen? And, but sometimes we've got to take time and focus and meditate and, and look at the Scripture. Amen? And grow. And as you call upon the Lord, I just want you to understand that you can pray in Jesus' name. Uh, in fact, the Scripture says, whatever you ask in my name, I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I think I said this at the church, but I've heard other people pray before, and they'll close their prayer in your name. And uh, I like to say what name I'm praying in. And then I like to call upon the name of Jesus because he gave us the authority and the privilege to use his name. And when you, when you meditate, listen to this, saints, when you meditate, when you say the name of Jesus, see, the thing is, Sometimes we use the name of Jesus almost in a blasphemous way, if that's a word. Meaning that we use his name without the authority and without the power that it was designed to use, be used. Amen? In fact, we often say his name uh, sometimes uh, not being godly at all. Amen? But, but I want you to, when you, in your true prayer and worship, when you're really starting to pray... And you say the name Jesus. You see, even now we're saying it in English. You know, when it was written in the Word of God and when it was biblical times, it wasn't English. Amen. But the name that God gave us and the language God gave us is English or Spanish. Amen. Here that's here tonight, or tongues. But 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 as we speak English, God gave us a name in English to speak. And the name he gave us in English to speak is Jesus. And so as we have given, been given that name to be able to speak, that, that is a name. And the name of God that God gave us, the privilege, the name that is above all names. That is the name of Jesus. Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Amen. That we've got to realize that he gave us that privilege. He gave us that name. So that's when we get to the part of the difference between a name and a difference in titles. <clears throat> Amen? I can't say that just at the, in the name of the shepherd, even though I know who the shepherd is. Amen? There's only one true shepherd, but there's many shepherds. You follow me? In fact, there's... In Spanish, there's a lot of men named Jesus. But you got to know the name of Jesus if you're praying in Spanish. you got to know which Jesus you, you're praying in the name of. Jesus. And we got to know that when we... So that's why I like to spend a little extra time whenever it's time to talk about the one God and the name of the Lord. So we want to talk about baptism. And, and so it gets to this part in Acts chapter 2. Verse 38. Now, like always, I want you to take time and go back and, and read and spend time around these verses of Scripture that I give you so that you can read a full story and read the full context. Because just doing this and what I'm sharing with you tonight, I'm not going to be able to take the time to read the whole chapter. Amen? Because there are several chapters that I want to bring out, and I won't get them all tonight, but I want to be able to get enough in tonight to... Make you go home and you'll read some and you'll get more out of it. In the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, we, we see something that is questionable in a lot of churches. Is baptism necessary to be saved? Because we, we look at this as, and many have said this, and you hear it in a lot of churches, that baptism is an outward sign that some Christians do just to show that they trust in the Lord. Have you, any of you ever heard it that way? It's just an outward expression. It just shows that, you're, uh, that you trust in the Lord. Now, it either is or it isn't necessary. Peter demonstrates here that it's necessary that you need to repent. It's actually two, two different things he's talking about. One is repentance. He says repent. And repent is feeling sorry, turning away from. Amen? You're, you're apologizing for your sin. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. The remission is the covering or the blotting out of your sin. Now, I've got a little thing that gives me a definition of that. It says uh, for forgiveness. The remission is the forgiveness or the blotting out, the taking away. We know that the Bible teaches that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Amen. So we get to a part. There's two things that's, that's <clears throat> we're covering in this one verse of Scripture. One is repentance and one is remission. Now, the way Peter describes it, it takes both. And Jesus gave a description about uh, also about those that believe and are baptized. Amen? And I think, let me let me turn over to that. And I think I want to read it in Mac, Mark chapter 16. Let me see if, I'm, if that's the right place I'm going to see. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So some people would read that verse of scripture in the King James Version Bible says, well, it didn't say I had to be if I'm not baptized. It said if I don't believe, I'm damned. It didn't say if I'm not baptized. It just said if I don't believe. The first part of that that paragraph says those that believe and are baptized shall be saved is that what you read in your bibles yeah. so so we but we we through tradition and through different people's philosophy remember we talked about philosophy last week mm -hmm. through different people's uh pastoring and different people's perspective of the word of god and because they wanted it to be friendly with everybody and start saying and almost like uh borderline you know some people want to do just enough to go to heaven but not not go all the way in don't you know i don't want to be uh i, I want to make as sure 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 as i can be that i'm going to heaven because when when my spirit leaves this body i don't get a second chance Amen. when i stop breathing i don't say i don't get it Oh, let me go back in and do this because too late now. it's too late. Mm -hmm. It's too late to go back and make a change after after you after this body's left. Amen. After this spirit has left this body. So me as a pastor, I want to dot the I's and cross the T's. I want to make sure that everything I see, if it's associated with salvation, I'm preaching salvation to the church. Amen. I pray that God's grace is bigger than what this Bible is showing in per certain scripture. Because we know many that have confessed Jesus and never got baptized. Some confessed Jesus in the hospitals, right? And some might have got, uh, I like to do a, uh, I like to do immersion. Amen? So some churches, and the Western churches, when they, they might sprinkle, they might pour a little water, they might do a full, Full submersion, you know. So, so, but different people do it different ways. So, but what?
Does the Bible say about doing it? How does the Bible demonstrate? Everywhere that I've seen so far, and I'm going to share some scripture tonight here, probably in the next couple portions, talk about what baptism really represents. And so if we understand what baptism represents, then we could have probably a more clear understanding why some churches would want you to take you all the way under the water. Amen. Is it necessary? So that was different people's perspectives could be different people's perspectives. Uh, and it goes to, do I believe it's just an outward sign or does it really do something? Is baptism really cleansing me of my sin? Does it really take away my sin? Now we know nothing can do anything without faith. It has to all start with faith. I've talked with some churches, uh, and I sent a message. I, I know some churches are pretty strong. Uh, I know this Pentecostal church, and they're pretty strong on taking you under, right? So I sent a message to one of their, uh, do you call them parishioners or church people? I said, what if? I've got somebody in the hospital and their health won't let you take them down under. You know? And they're, you know, so everybody's the same. Well, we prayed at God's grace and they would do the same thing I said. I was freaked on. Well, I normally take oil when I go see somebody at the hospital anyway. Amen? But I would, if, if I couldn't get their head wet, I would splash them. You know, just, I sprinkle them because a little, that little bit is better than, than not being able to do anything. Amen? But, but all of you, you're under a sound mind here tonight, so I want to make sure you understand that if you're sprinkled, you understand that that sprinkling is, is, the, is the covering of what baptism is supposed to be. It's not just an outward sign. It's not just, okay, I, I'm just being part of the church. You have to understand that uh, baptism represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And go ahead, I'll go ahead and cover that part. If you'll turn to Colossians chapter 2, just in case we run out of time for tonight, I want to at least cover this part in uh, Colossians chapter 2. And I, I, some concern, I, and I told, uh, I told someone this week that I wanted to cover this tonight. I know when my mother, uh, when I baptized her, she had got baptized when she was young, but she, just as I asked you guys to be baptized again, she was willing to, but my mom was one of these ladies that went to get her hair done every week. <laughs> you know? And so she really didn't want to get her hair messed up. So I told mom, I said, wear a shower cap. You know, and uh, so she did. So I baptized her with a shower cap. And I've looked at it. So I've, I Googled. I, I, you know, I thank God God's got Google. Uh, but at the same time, some people, they, they don't like using shower caps. Some say it's use a, a swimming cap. Them things. I don't know what the difference is between a sh swimming cap and a shower cap. They both keep your head dry. Right? right? But what it has to be taught first is the importance of it and what the baptism represents so that you know. Amen? That you know exactly what's taking place. And you can get the same spiritual effect <coughs> if with knowledge and with faith you receive it. Amen? And I, and I really don't think pastors spend enough time on giving you the full knowledge. We, we'll set him, we might read something quickly and... Uh, or we hear some message and we think, well, we don't mean that much, so we don't have to spend much time on it. It meant enough for Jesus to say, believe and be baptized. It meant enough for uh, Peter to turn around in Acts chapter 2, 38, to say, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Then, 
you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? How many of you want the gift of the Holy Spirit? Amen? We all, of course, it, it, Jesus says, I'm going away, but I'm going to send a comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. So if you don't want the Holy Spirit in your life, then you don't want Jesus. You see, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they're the same. Amen. <clears throat> but his Holy Spirit is what infills you to be present with you. Jesus bodily is in heaven. Amen? But his spirit, the godly spirit of him is here amongst us. And those that call upon his name, you become the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. Amen? Now we, we have, probably won't get to this one part tonight, talking about the different times that some people were filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, even before they was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's look in Colossians chapter 2. Make sure I want to... Take a minute short. Over here, 12, I think it wanted me to be. I'm going to back up to verse 9, because we covered verse 9 the, the other day, talking about the oneness. I'm going to start at verse 9, and I'm going to go forward. And, and this, this part is de describing and demonstrating what baptism is supposed to represent. It's not just an outward sign, just the same way as communion. The Bible is really specific on communion. You don't take communion lightly. You don't have to take communion every week. There's not a set time that you have to take communion, but when you do... You need to have a holy attitude about it. You need, it needs to be done decently. It needs, to, it needs to be done respectfully and in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same way with baptism. We don't take baptism. We don't just do it for church membership. Amen? Yes, there's people that's joining the church that we, we say that might be part that you're showing outwardly that you're doing this. But I want to make sure just because you're getting baptized, that... That's not necessarily the part that we want to accomplish by baptism is church membership. It's salvation. We want to make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. So the same way as if, you're, uh, if you've gotten baptized before without the full understanding, then it's like, I, would, I want to be baptized with a deeper understanding. Now that I understand more, you know, when I was a kid and got baptized, I didn't have that great of understanding. So now that I, when I got to be an adult and got baptized again, then it's like I had a greater understanding. I could receive it more. You know, like our young people today, they might hear the preaching of God's word and it all sounds good and it plants a little seed. But some of you that have heard that have heard the word of God for a while, you'll hear something and that's whenever you'll it'll hit just the right amount of water, you'll get some of that miracle grow. And that faith will jump up in you, and you, next thing you know, your whole body's healed. You're delivered from whatever stress. As a young people, you don't really know what stress is except for having to take a test. Right? But you sit here, and as you get older, you're, you're paying those bills. You're making sure you got insurance. You're making sure if something happens to me, my family's taken care of. You're making sure I'm preaching the truth. What does the word of God? I'm not preaching, yes, the church blesses me with a, with a paycheck, but I'm not preaching to you to, to make you happy just so I get a paycheck. I'm preaching to you so that you're saved. Amen. Number one, that you're saved. Number two is that you're empowered to be able to resist the devil so that when he attacks you, because it's not a matter of if, it's when he attacks you, then you have the word of God to, to, and the strength to fight back. And as being part of our church here at Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church, I can't talk about every church, but our church, you're part of our church, we pull together and we pray together. Amen. So whenever the bully comes against you, that bully don't come against one, it comes against the whole church. Amen. Amen. Whenever somebody, I wore a shirt yesterday, I think it was yesterday, when the honey, it says it had... Bullies with one of them circles with a line through it. Uh, don't like bullies. But uh, because bullies, they pick on the weaker vessel. 
And most of the time when somebody's by themselves, <coughs> you, know, you might have one weaker person and you get one strong guy, he bully him around. You get about four or five weaker guys, you add all them together, they're stronger than that one man mm. or one bully. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You add all of our faith together, we've got faith the size of a mustard seed. Amen? Some of us, our faith is growing. And some of us is just barely just enough to be saved. Amen? But you add all of our faith together, we're going to move mountains. The sickness has got to leave. The cancers have got to leave. Amen? The hearts and the strength has to be restored. Amen? Let me read this verse of Scripture. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, of course, him is Jesus Christ, who is the Godhead bodily, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All rest in him bodily. The bo only body of God that the Bible talks about is Jesus Christ. Jesus says, God, God the Father is spirit. Those that worship him in, it must worship him in spirit and truth. Is that what you've read before? Mm -hmm. that, that God is the spirit. Those that worship him, got to worship him in spirit and truth. But the body, only bodily, he represents the fullness of the Godhead in him bodily. Amen? And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. He's the head. He's above all things. There's no power greater than Jesus Christ. It, the Bible says that if you are complete in him, look, talk about you. You are the body of Christ. You're the body of Christ. He's the head. You're the bride. You're the body. But he's the head. Now, we have to realize that, that Christ is the head of our faith. He's the chief cornerstone, but he's the head. Amen? It's got to be his leadership. We don't tell God when and what and how and where. That's sort of, we try it though, don't we? We try to give God a time limit. We don't focus a lot on time here at Pleasant Grove. You know, we don't always let out at 12 o'clock. You know, but, but we, we, we get stirred up enough that we feel God's presence. And we preach until we feel like he's finished. And all of you sit here until I say amen at the end of it. And then you, sometimes you stay around talking a little longer. But you always wait. Because you know how important it is to hear the word of God. Amen. But look at this. I'm, I, and I'm probably going to finish with this because I know it's, it, it's so. I don't want to rush. Uh, the Lord's giving me some stuff to say here in the middle of this. And I don't want to rush what because it's his time. Amen. We've got to realize when we come in God's house, we're on his time. We're Yes, we, we push through here tonight. How many of you ever feel like, I just don't like going, feel like going to church tonight? You ever felt that way? Yeah. Ain't no lie, I feel like that sometimes, and I'm the pastor, right? <laughs> pastor, you're supposed to be there. Oh, you know, sometimes the body gets tired. Amen. You know, you work a, a secular job, you deal with secular things, you deal with family stuff bodily or you know human things and you get burnt out you get tired Amen. you know but i'm reminded of the scripture and it says this preach the word be instant in season and out of season when you feel like it and when you don't and saints i can look at a faithful and, the, and there's some that would Normally are faithful to try to be here when the help will allow them. But you're faithful to push through. Even, and I know there's times you don't. Brother Greg, I know you are a hard-working man. You get out there, and I know it, even though I don't know exactly what your job is, but I know you have to focus. Amen? And I know whatever everybody else does, you get tired. You sometimes like cleaning whatever you're doing. You get tired. You just don't feel like it. The body, you sit down long enough, the body don't want to get up. And it's almost the, the more you sit, the tired you get. You ever been like that? Yep. You don't, but you push through. But here it says, we're completing him, but he is the power. He's the head of all principality and power in whom also you're circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Now I want to pause there a second because 
Paul had to correct Peter. You see, Peter, even after he had preached there in Acts chapter 2, 38, he went on to preach trying to get the Gentiles to be circumcised. Amen? You're adults, you know what circumcision is. But Peter, you know, the Jewish, that was their custom, that was their outward. It wasn't their baptism, it was their outward focus of when a man is circumcised, I think it was at eight days, I don't remember exact, the exact time, uh, but there was... Uh, I worked with a Jewish man up at Honda Jet, and he went to his son was eight eight days old to be circumcised. I tell you what, Jeffrey was circumcised before before he left the hospital, you know. And uh, but you you look at this is that whatever their tradition was, Peter was telling grown men to be circumcised, and and Paul comes around and he rebukes Peter. He says, you know, you're trying to get people to do things under the law when you yourself couldn't do it under and keep the whole law. We're, you see, we couldn't keep the law. That's why Christ came to forgive us of our sins, that he shed his blood that we could get forgiveness. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. So Peter, this is what Paul is getting ready to emphasize to the Gentile church. You and I are the Gentile church. Amen? But we look at here and he says this, with the circumcision made with the circumcision, the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So it's talking about cutting off the things of the world, the things that the fleshly, the sin of the world. And that's what Paul is talking about. And that's really what the God's purpose in the Old Testament, whenever he had the, the Jews doing this, of circumcision for the young males for their to show that they're God's people. I'm thankful that we have the New Testament. I'm thankful that we have a clearer understanding of what it really means. Now, this is where we get into the baptism, verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. Baptism, as you know, if you, if you think about baptism, baptism, it was to be under, going under the water, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead as we come back up. So we're buried, we're dead, we die to sin. Right? We're, Jesus died to take our sin to hell, Right? Jesus allowed himself. Now, Jesus says, I have power to, to lay my life down. I have power to raise it up again. Here, the scripture says, God raised him up. He raised himself up, right? He, because he's God in the flesh. So he, he had the power to lay his life down, the power to raise it up. He had to lay it down because the devil couldn't take it. See, no one could take Jesus' life because God is life. He allowed himself to be beaten. He allowed himself to be mocked. He allowed himself to be crucified. In verse 13, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So he's talking to the Gentiles, the ones that were not in their custom to be circumcised, he said, in your own circumcision, and because you've been uh, you dead, you allowed yourself to be dead to your sin, then he's forgiven you of your trespasses. That now the people that was not a children of God are now a children of God. So having a deeper understanding of what baptism is, you said, I, I want whatever it takes. And I don't want to get just enough. You know, when you uh, go to the grocery store, which now everybody pays credit card or debit card, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you still pay cash. Who still pays cash? Sometimes, sometimes I'll pay cash. Sometimes I'll pay credit card. Mm -hmm. Amen? But if I'm planning on paying cash, I don't want to have to count out pennies. That's right. I'll tell you this. Me and Jeffrey, when Irene was out of town, me and Jeffrey went to Secure's. 
and I left my wallet at home. But I knew in the car, I always throw change, right? And I, I, Jeffrey, I left him in there at the booth. I said, I got some money in the car. Yeah, I went out to the car, and I done counted eight dollars in quarters. <laughs> and I said, you know, I've got pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and I got tired of counting. I had a little, I had a little Ziploc bag. I'm counting all this money, putting in. And we it, we go to this restaurant frequently, uh, at least once every two weeks, and uh, sometimes they I'm able to skip more than that. Most time, Jeffrey won't every week, but I try to push it at least two to three weeks. <laughs> so we have the same waitress mostly every time. I said, look, I said, I can come in here and pay with quarters or you'll let me go home. Uh, you know, here, here, my card, I said, go home and I'll get my wallet and I'll come and pay. And they, they smile and said, we know who you are. You, you come <laughs> back and pay it. You know, come back and pay it. They probably didn't want to have all them, you know, I guess in two plates we'd have had fifteen dollars in at least uh, in quarters or change and all that stuff. I was going to have to add up to be able to pay it. But I didn't want just enough. You don't want to pay and then just enough to to what if I? There's been a time in my life that, of course, I didn't have a credit card, and you go to the grocery store and you got to get something and you barely got enough. There's times my mom, uh, whenever I was a boy, there's a time we was on food stamps. And my brothers and sisters, they didn't want to, you know, they was embarrassed. And uh, I, was, I was a young, I was a young kid. Uh, but at that time, you know, young kids, you could take the food stamps in and, and do that. And and, uh, and I said, well, do you get the, you know, certain things that you could, could get? And uh, I would go get the groceries. Then it came a time about getting free lunch. My brother and sisters, they, they did I don't know about my sister. I know my one brother didn't want to get free lunch. He'd rather go hungry. I said, do you still, still eat the same food everybody else eat? My mom said, yeah. I said, I'll take free lunch. You know? So it was a time that, you know, I ate free lunch. We didn't have the money to do that. Amen. Yeah. But we get into this part of people that just want to do just enough to maybe or maybe not make it to heaven. I don't want to be that preacher, and I don't want you to be that church. Amen. I don't want you to. I don't want you to serve Jesus just so you're healed. I want you to be healed because you serve Jesus. Amen. I don't want you to serve Jesus to be blessed. I want you to be blessed because you serve Jesus. Amen. And I want to make sure that I teach and preach to you who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and have such a desire and emotion and, and, and built up in you to say, I want more of what Pastor Jeff is talking about. I don't want just enough. I want to have enough that I got enough that my cup's overflowing. Amen. That when that enemy attacks me, that I say, I know what scripture to go to. Amen. I've been faithful. Let's, let's look, look at this, and we're about finished for tonight. But he says this, For giving you all trespasses, in verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Now, what is, what is Paul talking about? The law, the ordinances. Because no no person could keep all the law. Amen. And that's why they had to continually have those blood sacrifices. Said so he took those ordinances that was against us and nailed them to the cross. Now we, we look at this, all this is still related to baptism. Because we have to be uh dead iron. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? That I, somewhere over there in 1 Corinthians 3.16 or, or 
Romans 1, 16. There's one of them, I'd have to go back and look at it, but it just came to my spirit, that I am crucified. I'm dead with Christ. I'm crucified with him, but by being buried, Jesus was buried. Now, some people say, well, yeah, but Jesus was buried, wrapped up, and put in a tomb. Right? He's in one of them, uh, what do you call him? He, he wasn't underground. He was in a cave with a stone rolled in front of him. How are we buried? We, they don't bury just your head, right? You're not an ostrich, right? Uh, so, so we have to understand why, why when we baptize, we want to do immersion. Now, to my understanding, some have already been baptized, and, they, and so it comes to a concern, why do I have to have it all, all done? Amen? And how, how am I planning on doing the baptism? Amen? And so I want to address that just so that you have an understanding of why I do it. And then if, if I do it a different way, you have the understanding that it's because of your health reason. Why I don't take you under the water. Amen? And some's concerned about if, if they get down, if I, they can get back up. Like I'm falling, I can't get up. You know? Uh, so it's some people's concern uh, if you can get back up. And it's been, uh, and I said, look, I got Brother Greg, me and Brother Greg, we get you up. You know, we, we, if we have to get a winch, you know, over there and put you under a tree, we'll, put, we'll get you up. But no, is it, but, but it has an understanding. Uh, so one, one method that, that I'm trying to pray about of being able to do is, if you're not able to get down in the water, we'd put a chair sitting in in the in my tank. Amen? And then we'd take like, put that shower cap on you that if you're scared to get your hair wet. This is what my desire is, and we still see what other way we could do it. And then we're going to make sure you get wet. Amen? And that, because uh, if you take a shower, you're not afraid to get wet. And so the same way as you're going to shower, you're going to shower. I'm not, I might not take you under where I'm. You still want to hold your breath because, you know, you, it, I don't know how many of you breathe when you sit there taking a shower. I hold my breath when I've got shower water in my face, right? So the, the desire is that the ones that either have ear issues, you let the shower cup, cap cover your ears. Uh, I'm concerned with my people that's on oxygen to make sure that how I'm going to baptize you is still going to be special. You'll be able to take your oxygen off. I'm not going to take you down to, down like that. And some of our ladies, Miss Doris, I know she's watching. She says she's going to be trying to watch. And I know she likes to get her hair fixed on Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you, Miss Doris? Yep. <laughs> and she's probably thinking, well, I might just skip that day. I don't want to get my hair. But we'll, we'll have a way that you put a put a shower cap on to preserve for my mom, my mom, it, she she didn't want her hair messed up, right? But if you're not scared, if you're not, if, if these other ways don't bother you, I'm going to take you down, and I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, uh, and, and and bring you back up, amen? And I'm not, I'm not going to say, but two or three verses of script, no, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'll say all I'm going to say before I take you under the water. Okay, I'm not going to hold you under. Uh, whenever I baptized Daniel's <coughs> sister-in-law, he said that he told her that I only say about three or four paragraphs while I hold them under. And uh, so, so you you pray about that. And some of you that have had concerns will continue to address it. Uh, and those that are watching later will address it to make sure that. The, the physical concerns are addressed, but it's important that you have an understanding of what baptism is and what it means. Amen? Amen. It represents the death and burial. You died with Christ. And then you raise up in the newness of life. Think of 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're meant to be a new creation, born again. Jesus says, uh, 
this thought come to mind when Jesus was crucified and they pierced his side. Do you remember what came out of Jesus? Well, blood and water. There's blood and water. And sometimes I, I haven't, and I'm not trying to make the scripture say anything that it doesn't say. But whenever I, I see water in that, then I'm, I'm starting to learn more and about baptism. And Jesus, after he was resurrected, he said, those that believe it are baptized. Mark 16, 16 was after the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? He, he'd, already, he'd already resurrected. It's already New Testament. Somewhere from that point to 2024, it got watered down, no pun intended, to mean that it's just an outward expression. It don't mean anything. Jesus either means it to mean something or it doesn't. That's all I'm going to cover for it tonight. I've got uh, next week I'm going to have you, I'll give you copies. I got a list of scripture that I'm, I got references for. I uh, just didn't have a chance to make copies of them tonight. Because I know you want to read that. I know you want to have these things to, to put in your library. Understanding why you do things in the church other than just setting standards. You know? Regardless if we're uh, a Wesleyan church, we're God's church. Amen? And so we want to make sure that we do it God's way. And we're not doing it just because the Wesleyans do it that way. Amen? We're doing it because that's the way God's word says to do it this way. We don't live a sanctified life because the Wesleyan says you've got to be holy and be sanctified. That's what God's word says to do. And that's what the Wesleyan say to do. Be holy, be sanctified. Amen? But we're not doing it because the Wesleyans set a standard. We're doing it because that's what the word of God said. Amen? So it's important that when we talk about baptism, we have an understanding of why we do. And under the Wesleyan doctrine, you can sprinkle, you can submerge, you know, emerge, I guess is the word. Submerge, I mean, I, I'm thinking of the Spanish song, but go all the way under, you can pour water on the head, or you can, you know, somebody, sometimes people irritate you, they get their hands wet and they throw it in. Yeah. Yep. That the Wesleyan doc discipline says you can do it this way whenever I looked up how, how Wesleyan's baptized. Amen. And as I you know, I called and talked to Pastor <coughs> Tim. You know, I sent him a message that this is my about baptism. This is what I uh and expressed how I baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. And uh it says I don't have a problem with that. You know? So it's important that we have an understanding when we go toward our baptism that you, those of you that choose to be baptized, then you can get something out of it. I don't want it to be a peer pressure and just because the pastor said he wanted everybody to be baptized, although I did say that, you know, is that I want it, it, it to be your desire and you understand why we're trying to pull together as one and try to get grow together. Amen? But you're not growing together if you get baptized out of ignorance. And that's a bad, I don't want that to sound like a bad word because ignorant can sound bad if you use it in the wrong way. I want you to be educated about it. And I want you to understand why. Amen? Because doing something without knowing why other than because mom and daddy told you to, right? Is that uh, uh, Jeffrey's in that why stage sometimes, and his mom said, "Oh, I told you to. That's why." <laughs> so, but you, as, as a church, sometimes, sometimes you might have to do it if it's godly, and you have to wait for to understand the why. 
Just do what the Bible and be obedient to what the Bible says. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading and hearing of your word. We pray for your guidance. We thank you, Lord, for the moving of thy Holy Spirit tonight. We pray, Lord God, that as, as we teach about baptism, that you would give us all, even myself, a, a greater and deeper understanding. Lord God, not to just barely get in, but Lord, to, to preach and teach your word, Father God, with conviction, to preach and teach your word to get to go over, over and beyond, not just enough. Father God, I don't want to give the people just enough, Lord God, to get through. Lord God, I want to be able to give the people what the, the whole word of God is saying. Lord God, to, to make sure that they're, they can be here and leave every church service being 100% confident that they're ready to meet you. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you tonight. May you be with our church as we go our separate ways. Keep each one safe on the highways and byways. Father God, as they meditate on tonight's service, may you give each one clarity and understanding, Father God, and a deeper desire to grow closer to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.